Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard and today's video is on a topic a lot of you all have been asking about. So we're gonna be talking about this enclosure behind me or aquarium, I guess I should say. It houses my diving beetles. I received these a few weeks back from Bugs in Cyberspace. And since they told me they would be shipping them, I have been doing a whole lot of research. When I received the package, I wasn't exactly sure what all would be included, but I was pleasantly surprised to see a whole myriad of different diving beetles, as well as a few snails. So I got them unboxed, moved into this aquarium, and ever since I have been fascinated by them. I've probably spent way too much time just watching them. So today I'm gonna tell you everything that I've learned about them so far, why I think they make great pets, how I take care of them, and why they are probably my most favorite enclosure here in the Tarantula Collective. So I received two different genuses of beetles, Thermonectus, and Rontus diving beetles. They're both aquatic insects and they're found in freshwater habitats, such as ponds, lakes, marshes, and slow moving streams and rivers. They prefer freshwater environments, but can sometimes be found in brackish water as well. You'll often find them near the water's edge, where they can rest on aquatic plants or swim along submerged vegetation. They prefer clean and well-oxygenated water, as it helps provide them with the necessary resources for their survival. These diving beetles are true marvels of adaptation, equipped with special features that allow them to explore both the underwater and terrestrial realms. Not only are they excellent swimmers that can navigate underwater with ease, but they also have the ability to fly. So when the pond or other body of water that they're currently in begins to dry up, they can fly away and find a new watery home. But what makes these beetles so important for the ecosystem? Thermonectus and Rontus diving beetles play a crucial role in their aquatic ecosystems. As predators, they feed on a variety of prey including small insects, tadpoles, and even small fish. By regulating the population of these organisms, diving beetles help maintain a balanced ecosystem. In addition to their role as predators, these beetles also serve as indicators of water quality. Since they are sensitive to pollution and changes in water conditions, their presence or absence can provide valuable insights into the health of their habitat. Did you know Thermonectus diving beetles are known for their ability to tolerate extreme temperatures? They can survive in scorching hot springs or frigid mountain streams, showcasing their adaptability to different environments. And Rontus diving beetles are known for their unique hunting strategy. They utilize an air bubble trapped beneath their wing covers, which acts as a temporary oxygen supply, allowing them to stay submerged for extended periods during their search for prey. They have specialized air chambers beneath their wings, enabling them to extract oxygen from the water. This remarkable adaptation allows them to explore the depths of their water world. They use their middle and hind legs as powerful paddles to propel themselves through the water with precision and speed. Their streamlined body shape combined with their ability to release air bubbles helps reduce drag and increase their efficiency as underwater hunters. Now let's talk about how we care for these incredible diving beetles in captivity. Remember, it's important to recreate their natural habitat as closely as possible. Start by selecting a suitable aquarium. I am currently using a 29 gallon tall aquarium with a bow front. You really wanna make sure they have plenty of room to move around, both horizontally and vertically. It should be large enough to provide ample swimming space for the beetles with a secure lid to prevent escapes because they will try to fly away. Fill it with clean, dechlorinated water and add aquatic plants, rocks, and other natural elements to mimic their natural habitat. Not only do they not need a filtration system, but they probably prefer you do not provide one. They seem to like still water as they use the vibrations in the water to help locate and navigate towards their prey. If you need to add filtration like I did, then use a very low flow filter. I am using a shrimp filter for a 10 gallon aquarium. It is gentle enough to not create a lot of disturbance to the water and also not strong enough to suck up any of the small diving beetles or larvae into the filter. With plenty of plants in the aquarium, the natural filtration should be more than enough. Starting out though, a small filter might be needed until the plants have really grown in. I installed a small air pump as well and have it on the lowest setting, mainly to oxygenate the water until my plants are really thriving. Once the plants are established, I will most likely remove the air pump because the constant bubbles seem to really cause a lot of disturbance on the water surface. I have also provided a little land area, plenty of rocks, and aquatic plants like duckweed and water lettuce that are on the top of the water, and java fern, pothos, and other submersible aquatic plants on the bottom. 
bottom because the beetles prefer to bury their eggs in clusters or individually on submerged vegetation, rocks, plants, or other suitable surfaces within the water. And from time to time, they like to come out of the water and rest on top of the water lettuce, floating wood, or the little land area that I provided. And they may attach their eggs to the plants or deposit them in the crevices between the rocks or even in the substrate near the water's edge. The exact egg-laying behavior can vary among species and may depend on factors such as available resources and environmental conditions. When it comes to feeding, these beetles are carnivorous predators. You can provide them with a variety of live prey, such as small insects, bloodworms, or even brine shrimp. You can also feed them dead, soft-bodied insects like crickets, fruit flies, mealworms, or even some roaches. So your dead feeders for your tarantulas and reptiles don't go to waste. They will also eat fish pellets or algae pellets that you can pick up at your local pet store. Just make sure that the prey is appropriately sized for the beetles to consume easily. And make sure to avoid overfeeding and remove any uneaten food to maintain water quality. The amount and frequency will depend mostly on the amount and size of beetles in your aquarium, but I typically feed mine every other day. These diving beetles also make a great underwater cleanup crew as they are opportunistic feeders and will feed on any uneaten food that sinks to the bottom and will even munch on algae that is trying to grow in your tank. While diving beetles are primarily known for their voracious predatory habits and their ability to swim underwater, they are also equipped with powerful jaws that they use to capture and consume their prey. The jaws of diving beetles are known as mandibles, and they are quite formidable. These mandibles are sharp, curved structures that can deliver a strong bite. When hunting, diving beetles seize their prey with their mandibles and use them to immobilize and consume the captured prey. Their bite is primarily used for subduing and dismembering their prey rather than for defensive purposes. It is worth noting that diving beetles are not typically aggressive towards humans. They are primarily interested in capturing small aquatic organisms such as insects, tadpoles, and small fish. Therefore, the chances of a diving beetle biting a human are minimal, unless they are directly handled or threatened. But I can tell you from personal experiences that if you put your arm inside that aquarium to move around some rocks or plants, there is a pretty good possibility that one of those beetles might bite you. I think I was shocked or surprised more than I was in pain, but I still ripped my arm out of that water very quickly with the beetles still hanging on. While they are not venomous, their bite can pack a powerful sting and be surprisingly painful. So it's always wise to exercise caution and avoid any handling or putting your hands inside the aquarium unless you really need to because you want to prevent the potential of getting harmed yourself or more importantly, harming the beetles. So I want to thank you so much to Peter from Bugs in Cyberspace for sending out all these really cool beetles and a special thanks to Jesse from Shapes in Nature because he's helped guide me in setting up the aquarium and taking care of these cool beetles. I will leave a link down below to both of their social media so you can follow them and check out what they've got going on. If you like these diving beetles and you want to see more on these really cool aquatic insects, tell me about it down below in the comments and be sure to drop any additional questions you have about them there as well. I'm so fascinated by these guys, I'm sure I'll be making a lot more content on them in the near future. Also, I heard a rumor that Peter might be sending me some other aquatic insects to go in here that are different species, so it, it's going to become a really cool communal enclosure. Well, as always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>